Okay, uh, so hi everyone, uh, thanks for coming along. Um, as John said, my name's Charlie and uh, I was one of the Dub Dub Scholars this year and I was also a recipient of the AUC Scholarship, which is how I've been given the opportunity to, to come and speak with you today. Um, so just a bit of background about me, I'm a student at UTS, uh, I'm studying a Bachelor of Technology and Innovation um, and I also work as an iOS developer at a, med a media startup called Foreign Brief um, and also, also at an artificial intelligence lab called Remy AI. Um, I do have a Twitter handle, um, but I've never tweeted anything, so follow me if you're not particularly into reading tweets. Um, so moving on, uh, what's this talk about? Well, obviously we're going to be looking at notifications, starting out with a bit of an overview of the bigger changes that are coming to the notification system in iOS 12. Um, we'll then do a deep dive into one change in particular that's coming in September that's barely received any airtime that I've named auto-tuning, since there currently isn't any real name for it. Uh, we're going to have a bit of a look at this feature, what this feature may mean for your apps, uh, and then tell a bit of a pre precautionary tale about not putting all of your conference talk eggs in the one basket, but more on that later. Uh, finally, to wrap up the day, I'll be going over a couple of qu easy, quick notification changes that you can implement in your apps um, that will just improve your overall user experience and help you send better no notifications. Uh, so let's get cracking with a bit of an overview of what iOS 12 is bringing to the table in terms of its notification improvements and features, the first of which is group notifications. So this is probably one of the nicest changes that's on the horizon, and overall it's just a bit of a crowd pleaser because now by default, all notifications in the notification center will be grouped by app. This means that instead of taking up a huge amount of vertical space, uh, notifications will be constrained to their own stack, which can be expanded by a simple tap. As developers, we also have the ability to create multiple distinct notification stacks or threads, which allows for diverse content from the same app to be categorized in the notification tray. A great example of where this could be very useful is, say, in messaging app and splitting up the, the notifications from different chats. Uh, next on the list is custom interactions on notification content extensions. Uh, content extensions were introduced in iOS 10, and they have seen some use, but you could hardly call it widespread. Apple is trying to address this by allowing user interaction on these notifications, so that means allowing for buttons and other interactive UI elements inside the expanded notification. It's a nice addition, and some apps will make use of it, but seeing as it's not, not obvious to most users that you should 3D touch a notification in the first place, uh, I feel like this is just going to another drop in the bucket and not something to worry about implementing in your apps unless you have a fair amount of time on your hands. Uh, quiet notifications. So quiet notifications are a new class of notification that form the backbone of a number of changes that are being introduced in iOS 12. The notifications that we've been used to for the last 10 years have been rebranded as prominent notifications and as always they have the ability to make sounds, create badges and appear on the lock screen or as an alert. Quiet notifications, on the other hand, can do none of these things and instead only appear to the user when they swipe down on the notification center. So if you're sitting there wondering how your lovely, normal, prominent notifications can become relegated into quiet notifications, notification tuning is your answer. Tuning gives users the ability to quickly and easily change the way your app delivers its notifications, allowing users to flick between prominent and quiet delivery or even turn off your app's notifications altogether. Personally, I wasn't hugely concerned by this announcement because I feel like tuning will most likely fall into the litany of features that 95% of users will never find or touch. <clears throat> I was feeling that way right up until Apple announced the feature that I mentioned before that I'm calling auto-tuning uh, for lack of any official term. Uh, I was going to play a video, but audio isn't working on my laptop, um, but I've got the text from, from the announcement. It's only a 10-second clip. Um, basically, she said, depending on how your users are interacting with their notifications, they will occasionally see suggestions that ask them if they want to keep receiving notifications. So what does that mean? Unlike the manual tuning of notifications, auto-tuning appears to be where the iOS device decides of its own accord that your app's notifications aren't important enough, and it presents a pretty noticeable banner to your users on their lock screen, inviting them to silence all of your notifications. Now, the app that I work on doesn't abuse the notification system. Um, we only send a single notification each day, and I'm sure that none of your apps abuse the system either. But this change still makes me uncomfortable because the notifications have become a central part to maintaining user engagement over the long term. Uh, and this feature could fairly easily have a direct impact on that. What's worse is that short 10-second clip 
is all of the airtime that this feature received at WWDC. And it's only mentioned in passing on the iOS 12 consumer facing page and never on the developer portal. Siri also makes intelligent suggestions about your alerts based on how you interact with them. Other than that sentence, which is basically identical to what was said in the WWDC session, there is no other public information out there about this feature. Now, just stepping back for a second, if you're looking at this from a consumer perspective, there is actual value in this feature because no one likes being bombarded with notifications and if this will help to automatically manage and mitigate those notifications, then I could see this being a quite useful feature to the general public. On the other hand, looking at this from my perspective as a developer, I can pretty easily say that I never ever want this pop-up to display on my app's notifications. Why would any of us? As I said before, notifications are critical to long-term user engagement with an app. So obviously I want to do anything that I can to prevent that from happening. Uh, the thing that bothers me most about this feature though is just the sheer lack of information, of communication and direction from Apple about how it will actually work in practice. I mean, does it look at how a user interacts with one app's notifications versus another's? Or is it waiting until I, a user hasn't interacted with say 50 of your app's notifications before displaying the pop-up? Or does it look at how long a notification has sat in the notification center before being actioned and use that as a basis for inactivity. Just some clarity on what the system is looking for before it suddenly decides, all right, that's enough, no more notifications from you. Now, chances are that if you're doing the right thing now, you're probably going to be un unaffected by these changes. But I still, I still strongly feel that this is something that we should all know about and understand because through understanding, we can make better decisions about the way that we use and deliver notifications to our users. So because I thought that this was an important thing to know about and it would be something valuable that I could share in this talk, I decided that I would try and brute force the answers out of my phone. To do this, I set up an experiment where I built a range of test apps that each served to test an individual criteria to try and trigger this auto-tuning dialogue. So for example, one of the apps would receive notifications but I would never interact with or clear them. Another received notifications that I would occasionally open or clear, um, and another still that I would only 3D touch, etc., etc. I also had a customised sending rate for each app, with some absolutely spamming my phone, and others sending at much slower rates to look at how time and frequency may affect the results. I was also looking at potential differences between push notifications and local notifications, so all up I had a suite of about 10 test apps installed on the phone. To further extend the conditions of the experiment, I installed these apps on three separate iPhones, each running the latest iOS 12 beta. Um, I wanted to see if the way that the device was used, if, uh, I wanted to see if the way that the device was used played any part in determining which apps were flagged for tuning. So one was on my main phone that I continued to use as normal, another was on a phone that I hooked up to iMessage and that I I hooked up to iMessage and occasionally interacted with the text notifications and the last was on a phone that I never interacted with outside of the conditions of the experiment. I wrote out some scripts that triggered notifications and then set those loose on an infinite loop. And so I started receiving notifications. Lots and lots and lots of notifications. Thousands and thousands of them. A nifty new feature is the iOS 12 screen time section, which on top of receiving recording app usage, also conveniently records how many notifications you're receiving each day. As you can see, I was getting roughly around 1,800 notifications per hour on each phone, so it was quite a few. Uh, and so I waited for something to happen. And nothing, just crickets. Not a sign of any auto-tune prompt from any of the apps that I was testing. I'd been running the experiment for more than two weeks without any luck and by that time I'd also run into this strange issue where sending thousands and thousands of notifications, of continuous notifications, 24 hours a day seemed to have some negative effects on both the battery life and performance of my phone. Odd. Uh, moving on, so I, I decided at that point to, uh, that I needed to step back and try and evaluate what could be going wrong in the experiment and I think it basically boils down to one of three things. <coughs> Either my methodology was wrong, meaning that somehow these notifications and interactions with them just weren't ticking the right boxes for auto-tuning to trigger, with a, with a major possible factor being time. Another possibility is that this auto-tuning feature had been disabled for apps that were in development and would only trigger for apps that had been downloaded and used from the App Store. Um, and the final option is that just this, this feature hasn't been added or enabled in the current iOS 12 betas yet. 
Um, I personally think that the third possibility is the most likely of the three, because on top of explaining why my experiment failed, it also explains why there has basically been no mention of, this f of anyone encountering this feature online in any of the betas. I've continued running the experiment over the last few weeks, mainly to assess if time was the missing factor, with far less interaction on my part and only on a single old phone, because I couldn't deal with it on my main phone anymore, which did seem to address the battery issues. That's been running since about the end of July, and so far there hasn't been a blip. So unfortunately, end of this, I don't have any constructive feedback to provide on what this feature will mean for your apps and how you should go about dealing with it. I have, however, still included it in this talk because, well, for one thing, I put a lot of effort into this experiment and it would suck to have it kind of gone completely to waste, but also because I think it's important to raise awareness about the, about the lack of information surrounding this change, and hopefully through raising awareness we can actually get some answers. Um, so I didn't want this, for this talk to be completely devoid of practical advice for, for you all on notifications. Um, so while I can't talk to you about what you should be doing to avoid auto-tuning, uh, there are three nifty notification-centric features that have been added in iOS 12 that are, rel re that are relatively fast and easy to implement and will improve your overall user experience of your apps. The first is around how you make your initial notification request. So I think this is a scenario that we can all relate to. You've just downloaded an app from the App Store and you're all excited to get started with whatever it does, but the second you open it, bam, you get hit with the notification access dialog. Not only, not only is this interruptive and jarring to your first experience with the app, but you're basically being asked to make an all-encompassing judgment call about whether or not you want to receive notifications from that app without any notion of what the app does or what you're signing yourself up for. The new dot provisional case is designed to somewhat, somewhat mitigate this issue by letting your users trial your notifications before they have to make any commitment to them or even see the notification access dialog. All you have to do is include the dot provisional case in your initial notification request, and the request will instantly be granted without the need for any user confirmation. The catch, however, is that if you make your notification request in this way, your notifications will be delivered quietly throughout the trial period. So, if we covered, so as we covered before, that means no sounds, no badges, and alerts will only appear in the notification center. After a period of time, your notifications will appear with a very similar dialogue to the auto-tuning one, asking your users if they want to switch from, to receiving prominent notifications instead. So it's basically a way out of the doghouse. Uh, just as a little aside, I'd like to show you how I've implemented this feature in my app, um, The Daily Brief, which if you're at all interested in geopolitics, you should definitely go and download. Uh, we have, so we have an, an initial introduction page controller where we introduce the concept of the app and the, the notification service. So previously when the user tapped on the, on the cross in the top right hand corner to close out of the introduction, we would make the normal notification request. In our upcoming iOS 12 release though, we've altered our user flow so that, now, so that there is now an explicit button asking the user for notification access. If they tap this button, then we make the full request. Whereas, they, whereas if they skip the button and elect to just close out of the introduction, we pass a dot provisional request in the background, which I think is the best of both worlds and creates a smoother overall user flow. Next up, and briefly, uh, threaded notifications. So all you have to do to implement this in your app is include a thread dash ID value in your notification payload for each unique notification thread that you want to create. Currently, both Google's Firebase Cloud Messaging and Amazon's Simple Notification Service don't support this parameter in their payloads, but that will more than likely change come iOS 12's general release. Now, threaded notifications are a great way to distinguish between notifications if you're already using notification topics from either of these services. Um, and so you could just set your thread ID to this, that specific topic that you're using and just call it a day. Uh, I'm bringing up notification topics because it has an interesting tie into my last useful quick tip uh, that you can implement in your apps, and that's custom, the custom notification settings API. Now, the main reason you'd want to add this into your app is because it provides a final lifeline to a user who's checked out and wants to completely turn off notifications from you from the tuning menu. If you've implemented this pattern in your app, when, when a user taps on that big blue notification access, uh, uh, big blue turn off notifications button, they'll be presented with a confirmation sheet asking if they would either like to turn off notifications or if they would prefer to configure it in your app. Um, and apologies for the weird screenshot, the beta's currently glitched out with that pop up. Um, 
Now, there's obviously no guarantee that everyone who opts to go down this path will choose the in-app configuration option, but for those that do, you're providing a way for them to deal with their frustrations constructively from inside your app. There are two steps to turning this feature on. The first is to make another notification access request, this time just passing the dot provides app notification settings uh, case, which allows you to implement the user notifications app settings for delegate method. This method will be called whenever a user taps on that configure an app button and lets you launch your user directly into a notification settings page inside your app. Uh, very usefully on triggering, this method also provides a UN notification object, which is the notification that the user triggered the customize in-app action on. This means that you can provide a customized experience depending on what, specific, but what that specific notification was. Um, if you're already using notification threads and topics like I mentioned earlier, this will basically allow you to treat your notifications like old school email subscriptions with granular control over what content the user wants from you, but just without the 48 hour unsubscription times. Uh, yeah, so thank you. That was the talk. Uh, thanks very much for coming along and listening. Um, and I hope I've been able to impart something on you that you can put into practice with your apps. And hope you have a great dev world.